Hello. Thank you for joining us in this continuing series, the study of the book of Revelation. I come to you on behalf of New Life Ministries Church, and I come to you in the name of the Lord to share with you what I believe God has given me to share with the body of Christ for this day and for this hour. Before we get into our study today, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for who you are, that you are God all by yourself. We thank you for what you have done and how you have kept us, delivered us and protected us. And you have provided for us. You're the source of our sustenance. We thank you for warning us about what is coming to pass. We thank you for your revelation knowledge, and for your word. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We take nothing for ourselves. We ask, Lord, that you would open our eyes to your truth and your truth alone so that we may embrace that truth and love your truth. And therefore, we're not deceived by the enemy and his lies. And we're not blinded by the God of this world who would keep us from knowing and seeing the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise forever for you alone are worthy to receive all glory, all honor, and all praise, and all power. For all things were created by you, and for your pleasure were we all created. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, we praise you. Amen. I want to thank you all for your prayers of those that uh, have been praying for us and uh, praying for me in particular. Uh, I've had to uh, deal with some health issues this past week, but, uh, but the Lord is faithful and he's good and your prayers have been answered. This is why uh, I'm just now uh, doing the uh, lesson that I had desired to do on Wednesday, but uh, but I was unable to do. However, thanks be to God, it gives us the victory because I'm able to do it today. And so we will share with you what I believe God has given us to share. Revelation, the 16th chapter. And we're going to be dealing with verses uh, 1 through 21. Let's get into this. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple declaring to the seven angels, and I'm reading to you from the New English translation. Um, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. Now in our last lesson, we share with you how the uh, <coughs> how God had ordered them, these seven angels, they were in the temple of God and they were given seven bowls full of the plagues, the seven plagues of um, of God's anger, of his wrath. And uh, these are the final bowls that were going to be poured out upon the earth. And it was going to set into motion uh, things that would bring about the downfall of the uh, Antichrist and uh, the false prophet and all of those who had received his mark and had worshiped the beast or the antichrist and in so doing worship the dragon who is the devil who is always desired to be worshiped he wanted to be worshiped like god is worshiped and we we have that not only 
in uh, these fallen angelic beings, but we have that in people also. There are people that desire to receive the honor and the glory that belongs only to God. They take the credit for the things that they do. They take the credit for the things that they have. Uh, they don't give any glory or honor to God. But we see that uh, before that, before these uh, seven bowls were uh, given to these angels and they were told to uh, take them out of the temple and to, to pour them out upon the earth, uh, we see that the gospel, the everlasting gospel, was preached throughout all the earth by an angel that was sent, especially especially uh, to do that, which shows the, the great mercy that God has and the great uh, patience that he has. Uh, as Peter says, that God is not willing that any should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. And before that, he said, you know, God does not, uh, it's not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. In other words, because God has forbeared and, and he has uh, um, waited patiently before uh, putting forth his judgment and his wrath. He gives everyone that opportunity to repent and to turn from their evil ways and to be saved. God's desire is to save us. God's desire is to deliver us from sin. God's desire is to make us his children. And yet there are those who would love evil, would love their deeds of darkness rather than the truth of God's love. Um, and so we see this played out. Even up to this point, it has been played out. Um, and so now we come to the actual pouring out of these uh, bowls of wrath. Verse 2, so the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth. Then ugly and painful sores appeared on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. Now I want you to understand something. This, I'm just going to reiterate to you, this mark of the beast and this worshipping of the image of the, of the beast or the Antichrist is not something that is done uh, nonchalantly or by mistake. You know, some people uh, get afraid that they, they've they uh, got the mark by mistake and they took the mark because they got the vaccine or they took the mark because <coughs> they, uh, they, they, they received a credit card with that number or some other type of deal with 666. They think they've got the mark because they signed up for this or signed up for that. No, this is an intentional. This is something that is done with a conscious understanding that I'm rejecting the truth of God and I am accepting uh, this, this mark of the beast. I'm choosing this rather than what God is, is offering. I'm choosing evil rather than righteousness. I'm choosing darkness rather than light. Uh, there are those that, of course, will disagree with me, and that's fine. That's your that's your right and your privilege. You can disagree all day long, as much as you want. But I'm laying out what the scripture says. They know in their hearts that they are rejecting the truth. They have they they do not love the truth. They do not love God. They do not love one another. And because of that, they are, have been deceived. <clears throat> the ugly, then ugly and painful sores appeared on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. Next, the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it turned into blood like that of a corpse and every living creature <clears throat> that was in the sea <clears throat> died. Um, 
this is reminiscence of the plagues that uh, fell upon Egypt uh, during the time that God delivered the Israelites from the hand of Pharaoh. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, the water was turned to blood. The rivers was turned to blood. Uh, even the waters in the in the pots that they had for drinking water was turned to blood. And of course, there were boils or or sores that appeared on the Egyptians. Then the third, in four, verse 4, Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they turned into blood. Now I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are just, the one who is and who was the Holy One, because you have passed these judgments. I want you to understand something here. For those of you that might have a problem with God's judgments, God has given you, and given all of us, each and every one of us, he has given us an opportunity to repent and to be saved. God's judgments, as the psalmist tells us, is true and righteous altogether. There is no unjustness with God. God is just and he is righteous. So he has a right Number one, to judge because he's the king of the universe. Um, <clears throat> he has a right to judge because he's the creator of all things. Everything belongs to him. So when we have a problem with God, we, the problem that we have is we're in rebellion. Our rebellious hearts do not want to submit to the will of God. And we don't want to submit to his word and to his way. And as a result of that, we're placing ourselves in judgment against God. We're actually accusing God of being unjust. Uh, you might say, well, how am I doing? When we, when we say, it's not fair. That's not fair the way life is played out. It's not fair the way I'm treated and whatever. Well, you tell me this. Was it fair for the Lord Jesus Christ to come and to live among us and, and to suffer and endure the things that he suffered and endured, leaving his throne of glory and coming down and being with us and then being maligned and, and, uh, and being uh, uh, ridiculed and, and rejected and then going to the cross to die for uh, sins that he didn't commit. He was completely and totally innocent. Even a thief on the cross confessed that, that he was innocent. This man has done nothing to deserve this. Even the governor, Pilate, even though he was a coward, but he said uh, to them, I find no fault in him. That was the rule, the, the, the ruling that he gave as the governor from Rome, which was the ruling power at that time. I find no fault in him. Even his own wife said, this is a just man. So all of these testimonies to, to the righteousness of Christ was there. And then the, the uh, centurion that was at the foot of the cross when Christ gave up the ghost said, this was truly a righteous man. Because he had, he had done <clears throat> many crucifixions, but he had never heard anything like this. Someone on the on being crucified, a, a criminal being crucified, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So in spite of all of these things, we want to say it's not fair. Life is not fair. Because things don't go the way you want them to go. It's not fair because you don't have all the money you'd like to have. It's not fair because you don't have uh, the uh significant other that you think you should have. Life is not fair because uh, people don't like you the way you want everybody to like you. You say it's not fair. Well, life isn't fair because it wasn't fair for Jesus to have to die for us. So life is not, bare, not based rather on fairness. 
Life is life. <clears throat> we live in a day and a time now that everybody is talking about equity. We need to have equity. Uh, everything should be given out fairly, whether you uh, merited it or not. But I'm going to tell you something. God deals with merit. And here we see where <coughs> where the uh, it's been declared. Notice what he says. You are just, in verse 5, you are just the one who is and who was the Holy One because you have passed these judgments, because they poured out the blood of your saints and prophets, so you have given them blood to drink. They got what they deserve. You want fairness? If you really want fairness, if you really want justice, then you need to write heaven off your little ticket and get yourself prepared for the lake of fire, because that's justice. That's the fairness of it. That's what you really deserve. Each of us deserve. But God is offering us an alternative. He's offering us to be saved. He's offering us to be delivered from that fate. Jesus said that the lake of fire, that hell, the, the uh, Gehenna, was prepared for the devil and his angels. It was prepared for them. They don't have a choice. They're going. There is no salvation for them. But man has a choice. Everyone that goes to hell, they go to hell because of choice. They chose to reject heaven. There are only two, two uh, options, heaven or hell. You reject heaven, you got hell. You don't want to go to hell, choose heaven. God has made it simple. You can't, you can't make it any more simpler than that. But God is not going to put anyone in heaven that don't want to be there. And likewise, God is not going to send anyone to hell that does not choose to go there. Verse 7, Then I heard the altar reply, or uh, it says a voice, in the King James Version says a voice from the altar reply, Yes, Lord God, the all-powerful, your judgments are true and just. Just like the psalmist said, the judgments of the Lord are, right, are true and righteous altogether. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was permitted to scorch people with fire. Talk about climate change. This is true climate change. And guess what? All of your uh, banning of fossil fuels and, and, uh, and carbon capture, all of that, none of that's going to prevent this. This is going to happen. Verse 9, thus people were scorched by the terrible heat. But look at this. Yet they blasphemed the name of God who has ruling authority over these plagues, and they would not repent and give him glory. Now, if we look at the previous uh, chapters, when the when uh, even even though they had uh, persecuted the saints, they had persecuted and killed the prophets. They had persecuted and killed uh, even the two witnesses, and all. Even after all of that, the gospel was still preached. And let me tell you something. When the gospel is preached, it's because the door of salvation is open. As long as the gospel is preached, the door of salvation is open. As long as the gospel is preached and you have opportunity to repent, as long as you have breath in your body, when you repent, God will save you. But if you refuse to repent, God will judge you. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say you've already been judged. You've already been condemned. And look at this. All this has happened, but yet, look at this. Yet they blaspheme the name of God who has ruling authority over these plagues, and they would not repent and give him glory. Now, I want to tell you something. There is a point and a time 
that you can cross the line to where your conscience becomes seared is with a hot iron. And that means that you no longer have the ability to recognize the difference between right and wrong so that you can repent because you have given yourself over to the lie of the enemy for so long and you have rejected any kind of responsibility for your actions, trying to justify yourself in your sins and justify yourself in your rebellion. I'm going to read something to you uh, over in the Gospel of John. Um, In the in the twelfth chapter of the Gospel of John, I'm gonna start at the thirty-seven verses. Although Jesus had performed so many miraculous signs before them, they still refused to believe in him. Sound familiar to what we just read? So that the word of Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. He said, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? In other words, the power of God been revealed. For this reason, they could not believe. Because again, Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart so that they would not see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn to me and I would heal them. So if we look at Verse 37, although Jesus had performed so many miraculous signs before them, they still refused to believe in him. And then we go to 39, for this reason, they could not believe because again, Isaiah said. So they refused to believe and then they got to a point that they could not believe. All right, back to Revelation 16. So be careful. If you're hearing the word of God, listen to the word of God. If, you, if the word of God points out that you have failed in your, uh, in your life, that there's a failure in your life, there's sin in your life, repent. That's you, me, all of us. When the word of God finds us, repent. And all of us fall short. So don't think that I'm looking at you, uh, pointing the finger at you and, and condemning and judging you and all using myself as the, the standard. No, far from being a good standard because I fall short too. I mess up. Yes. But Christ makes up the difference. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I trust him. And I'm asking you to trust him. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ so that you could be saved. Verse 10, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast so that darkness covered his kingdom, the standing Christ, and people began to bite their tongues because of their pain. They were scorched with heat. They had uh, ulcers and sores all over their bodies and stuff. They were in pain and they began to bite their tongues because of the pain, just like a a, a, a ravenous uh, beast, uh, a rabid uh, animal. Uh, this is this is how they would be reacting. When all they had to do was repent, but they refused. 
They blaspheme the God of heaven because of their sufferings. They blame God. Sounds familiar? That's what we got today. They blame God because of their sufferings and because of their sores, but nevertheless, they still refuse to repent of their deeds. We look around our cities, and this is, this is nothing compared to what is going to happen after the rapture of the church and the rapture of the saints, and we get to, to uh, <clears throat> what, what happens when, when that uh, which is preventing evil from flourishing uh, to its full capacity, when that's removed, uh, it's, it's not going to be pretty here at all, but it, it's going to get worse and worse. But even today, when we look around at our cities and we see the crime and we see all that's going on, the confusion that is in, I mean, where you have people saying that they don't know what a woman is. They can't define what a woman is. They can't define what a man is. You know, that's stupid. But some of you might get offended, but help yourself with the offense. I'm not taking it back. Anybody got any eyes to see? A blind man can tell you if somebody is a woman or a man just by touch or by hearing the voice. But when you can actually see the truth in front of your face and still deny it, that tells you you're in a bad situation. You're in a bad place. Real bad place. And if you don't realize how bad of a place you're in, uh, I wouldn't want to be you. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and dried up its water to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Now, they're talking about you know, right now we're talking about the uh, the uh, threat of China and you know, and Iran and all these in North Korea and and Russia, all all of these uh, potential enemies. And some are enemies, but those that would be a potential enemy in a war. We're talking about those uh, right now, uh, but it's nothing compared to what's going to happen because the kings of the East from the east are going to come and they're going to have to cross that Euphrates River to get to a place where God has preordained. And I want you to look at something. When you get an opportunity, read the uh, 24th chapter of the book of Matthew. Just, just sit down and read it and take it for what it's saying. Just read it. And then look at, pick up your history book I know some of you don't like history, but pick up your history book and begin to compare what is being said in the 24th chapter of Matthew and, and look at the timeline. This is, this is in the first century AD. And then here we are in the 21st century AD. And look at what has transpired. Here's someone speaking over 2,000 years ago about events that were going to happen right now. Because what he talks about in the 24th chapter of Matthew was not something that happened in the centuries since until these latter two centuries. It's a setup. He's setting us up. He's warned us. He's prepared us. We, we have no excuse not to be prepared. <sighs> then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Remember the frogs that were over in Egypt that uh, was into everything, got into the bread, got into the everything. And where you look with frogs, and then they died in it. They, the stench filled the air throughout the land of Egypt. But these, they look like frogs. These evil spirits, look at this, unclean spirits, came out of the mouth of the dragon. And Pharaoh, when, when, when Moses gave Pharaoh the opportunity to... Uh, 
to repent and let the people go. Even though the stench was so bad throughout Egypt, he told Moses, said, come, come again tomorrow. He wanted one more night with the frogs. This shows you the depravity that can be in the human heart and the human spirit, the human mind. This shows you how we, we might, things might be bad, but it ain't as bad as it's going to be. It's going to get worse. I know that my grandma is not the best today, but you get the picture. You get the point. Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Look at this. Came out of each one a frog came out of. Each one was a lying spirit. For they are the spirits of the demons performing signs who go out to the kings of the earth to bring them together for the battle that will take place on the great day of God, the all-powerful. They're stirring folks up. They're going to stir up these kings to come to battle. <clears throat> Look, I will come like a thief. This is the Lord speaking. Blessed is the one who stays alert and does not lose his clothes or become naked so that he will not have to walk around naked and his shameful condition be seen. The church of Laodicea claimed that they were rich and full of goods and had need of nothing. And Jesus told them, said, no, you, you're blind and you're naked. Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Dress up for the battle. <clears throat> now the spirits gathered the kings and their armies to the place that is called Armageddon in Hebrew. This is the plain of Megiddo. Uh, finally, the seventh, and no, Napoleon, just to give you a little deal of history, Napoleon, when he first saw <coughs> that plain of Megiddo, uh, or Megiddo, uh, he said, he made this statement. He said, this is a perfect battlefield. It's, 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 the, it's the perfect place for a magnificent battle to take place. God made it that way. Finally, the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. It is finished. And when Jesus says it is finished, when God says it is finished, guess what? It's finished. <clears throat> That's it. No more chances. No more opportunity. It's done. The judgment is passed. And it's coming to pass. It's going to happen. Then there were <coughs> flashes of lightning, roaring and crashes of thunder, and there was a tremendous earthquake, an earthquake unequaled since humanity has been on the earth. So tremendous was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. So Babylon the Great was remembered before God. <coughs> and was given the cup filled with the wine made of God's furious wrath. Now remember, we talked about it. It says Babylon has fallen. It's fallen. And that was talking about the system. It was already declared. Before God, and we share this with you in previous videos, before God does something, before he acts, he always speaks. He always gives warning. He tells you ahead of time. But now, if you're deceived and you're blinded and your ears have become dull, you don't hear. And the only way you're deceived or blinded and your ears have become dull is because you've rejected the truth and rejected the word of God that you don't hear him anymore. You've lost the ability. So then you're caught as a thief in the night. You're caught unawares. Every island fled away and no mountains could be found. In other words, this earthquake was so great that it changed the, topo the uh, topography of earth. It changed the landscape. 
and gigantic hailstones weighing about a hundred pounds each fell from heaven on people. But look at this. But they blasphemed God because of the plague of hell, since it was so horrendous. No matter, no matter how God get how bad it got, they still blamed God. They still rejected Him. They still blasphemed His name. They still would not repent. And we have the same situation now. And it's the world has been this way. But it's sad when even in the church, people, when they hear the word, won't repent. Even in the church house, you have people that will not receive the truth of God's word. They're so full of pride. There's got to be the way they see it or not. That's just the way it is. If, if, I, if, I don't, if I'm not given the revelation, then I'm not receiving it. Since we're in a dangerous time, a dangerous day, we're in a time that we need to make choices and decisions. Either you believe the word of God and you go after him and you seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near so that he can forgive you. He can turn you to the truth. He can save you. He can heal you. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord says, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. I will heal their land. And I'm going to close with this. I know all of these things that we're sharing with you is, we've said is after the rapture and all, but the rapture hasn't happened yet. So why go through all of these things after the rapture <clears throat> when you can be saved today and avoid these things by being caught up in the rapture when he calls his church to himself? While it is today, today when you hear his voice, hard not your heart, while it is today, call upon him and be saved. God asked Israel this when he was getting ready to pass judgment upon them and he was pleading with them, sent his prophets to plead with them to turn from their wicked ways so they could be saved. And then he asked the question, why will you die? The same question stands today. Why, church, will you die? Why, world, will you die? Why, America, will you die? Why, family, will you die? Why do you cling to things? Is your money that important? You're going to leave it here because it's not your money anyway. Your house, your land, your property, your relationships, are they that important? Your lovers. Are they that important? Your sins, are that important to you that you would lose your soul? Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Nothing is more valuable than your soul. God showed you the value of your soul when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. He showed you that the most valuable and important thing in this world, in this life, to you is your soul. And the most precious commodity that heaven could produce was paid for your soul. And yet you would reject that pardon. You would reject that deliverance and that salvation and cling to your sins and your pride. 
The ball is in your court. It's time for you to make a decision for Christ or against Christ. There's no other way. And depending on what your decision is, will ensure the place that you will spend eternity, either with Christ in heaven forever or away from Christ in a burning hell forever. It's your choice. Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to your truth and your truth alone. Father, we, we confess that we fall short. There's so much that's happening. And sometimes we're overwhelmed even. We make promises that we fail to keep, not intentionally, but nevertheless, it still happens. So forgive us. We make choices that are not in line with your word and your will. Whether intentional or not, forgive us, please. We offend. And blessed is the man, the scripture said, does not, that does not offend. But we offend. I have offended. Whether intentional or not, I don't think that I've offended intentionally, but if it is, forgive, please. Forgive your people of their sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord, to do what is right in your sight. Help us to see your truth so that we may be delivered from that great day of wrath. Open our eyes to your truth so we may see your face. We may walk upright before you. I ask this in your precious name. And Lord, open the eyes of our leaders in government that they will do what is right in your sight. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, humble us. Let them be humble before you. Not walk around prideful and arrogant. <sighs> Let the cause of the innocent be promoted. The cause of the of the underprivileged be promoted. Those that, that don't have, let those that have share with those that don't have. Give us a heart of love, a heart of mercy, a heart of caring, a heart of repentance, a heart of worship to you and you alone. Not these things. Help us to reject the idols of our lives whether they be finances, property, relationships, whatever they might be, even ourselves. Let us reject those things and focus on you and give you the worship that is due your name, your name alone. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints, until next time.